Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special guest today and friend of ATP is Dr. Bill Warner. He joins us today. Bill is the expert on Islam in America. He has been studying it scientifically for 20 years and is generally acknowledged as the man to go to for an interpretation of what Islam means in America. Welcome, Bill. Glad to be here. So glad to have you, my friend. So let's start out with the most infamous um, representative of the Muslim community in America, uh, Minister Farrakhan. Uh, he is the leading hater of all things white, all things American, and all things Jewish. Um, particularly the but, latter. <laughs> exactly. Um, Expand for us on why the interpretation that he has of Islam is fairly accurate in terms of why Islam hates Jews so much. Actually, I've not read exactly what he said. Let me say that to some degree, I'm ignorant of the man because I don't actually watch what he says and does. <clears throat> but having said that, I've read a lot about him. And his form of Islam is bizarre. As a matter of fact, it's very unorthodox. As a matter of fact, well, we won't go there. But he got the lesson of the Jews from Muhammad, and he got them exactly correct. Uh, there is more Jew hatred in Islamic doctrine than there is in Mein Kampf. And it's, having read both Mein Kampf and the Jew hatred doctrine of Islam, the Jew hatred doctrine of Islam is much better. Now that's said with a peculiar twist on words, but nevertheless, it's a better quality of hate. So this guy has made a career out of it, uh, for half a century. Um, he's still there. He's still prominent and he's still doing it. Every time he opens his mouth, out comes more hatred of the Jewish people. Is there an anti-Semitism of American mainstream Muslims and the anti-Semitism of the nation of Islam that you can draw parallels to? Or is he just applying Islamic theology? I'm afraid to tell you he's just following the book. I mean, he's, he, he's not making this stuff up. It comes directly from Islamic doctrine. I mean, I find that when I'm, I, one time I gave a talk to some rabbis here in Nashville, Tennessee. This was a long time ago when I thought I could influence people by the truth. It was the coldest room I ever sat in after I got through talking. They did not want me to have been there. They did not want to know they'd ever heard this because what I said, I said, I want to tell you what happens with Muhammad and the Jews. And I said, this comes from Islamic doctrine. It's, this is like quoting scripture. And boy, I mean, they didn't, it was cold. They did not want to hear any of this. I doubt that any of them have ever referred to it since. They did not want to know. And I could understand why they didn't like it because it's vicious. It's just vicious. Oh, but let me say this. There's also a part of the Quran in which the Jews are held up as great people. Muhammad, in order to prove himself to be a prophet, said that I am from the lineage of the prophets of the Jews. It's the same archangel that talks to me who talked to Moses. So therefore he first portrayed himself as a prophet in the lineage of the Jews, so therefore he kind of claimed to be a Jew. But then there were no Jews in Mecca. And so the, the pagans in Mecca sent a writer to Medina, which was north of there by about 300 miles, to ask the Jews there, what should we say about this man? Because they didn't know any much about Judaism since there's no record of any Jews in Mecca. Well, they basically said he's not a prophet. In that moment, the Quran pivots. And in the last year of their stay in Medina, the Quran of the Mecca was fill, starting to fill with Jew hatred. And by the time I got to Medina, it was full blown. I mean, it, it became all out war. So now we, we fast forward to the current day. There are two wildly anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, anti-Zionist members of Congress, uh, specifically Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, that seem to think Farrakhan is, well, the cat's meow. Um, they subscribe to uh, many of his uh, anti-Semitic theories and posturing. Uh, is, is this a working relationship or are they just all good Muslims that are following the book? Well, they're following the book. It's in the book. 
Now, they may also have personal communications, which I'm sure they do. I mean, look, they look at each other and see brother, sister. I mean, we look at them and go, ah, but <laughs> <laughs> not them. So I'm sure there's it. personal things going on there, but look, they've got the doctrine down. It's interesting to me that everyone knows to hate the Nazis because of Mein Kampf and what they did to the Jews. But somehow or another, no matter what Muslims do, it doesn't seem to offend most Jews. Now, there are some that it does, but I'm astounded by the fact that I noticed early on that Jews did not seem to object to anti-Semitism from both blacks and Muslims. Why this is, I'm not sure at all. I taught for eight years in a black university. And what I noticed was is that the attitude about young blacks in particular about the Jews was more like Farrakhan. It's among the older blacks that there's an acceptance of the Jews, but let me tell you something, those blacks are dying out. So we're seeing a shift here in anti-Semitism in America. And quite frankly, there's two things that bother me about this. Number one, that's growing and increasing. And the other is people are like, ho oh, ho, it's boring. I think it's because they don't want to face the facts of the matter. I've learned that the, we heard the expression denial is the biggest river in the world. It's a huge river and it's deep and wide and long. Well, you're, you're raising an interesting point and it actually is a great lead in to my next question, Dr. Bill, which is you have extremely famous people, very prominent politicians, members of the artistic community, the sports community that proudly stand up and have their picture taken with Farrakhan, specifically Bill Clinton, specifically Barack Obama, uh, mm. Snoop Dogg, uh, Ice Cube, um, Rashida Tlaib, uh, Ilhan Omar, and on and on and on, Jesse Jackson. Um, they're standing next to somebody who repeatedly has said, Hitler was a great man. And I That's don't think do. I forgot I, about that. I, I don't understand this lack of self-awareness. Um, we look back in history, Bill, and we would think, oh my God, who the heck would have his picture taken with Adolf Hitler? But exactly. And yet this guy is promoting the same theology. Um, with a maybe a, a, a different motivation. He's quoting a different book. It's not the one that he wrote. Uh, it's the one that he interprets. But some of his theology is insane. I mean, part of um, his movement is that white men were, uh, uh, I guess, invented in a laboratory by an evil scientist named Yakub. Right. And they were genetic misfits and the black race is superior to the white race and the whites should be the slaves of the blacks and on and on and on. I mean, it's it's incredibly crazy. And that doesn't include the anti-Semitism. Right. You add the anti-Semitism in and it's a whole different world of crazy. And yet and yet these people probably stand up with him and say, hey, Look at my picture with Farrakhan. This is going to be good for me in the black community. Everybody's smiling. Can you explain that to me, please? I cannot. There are many things that I've learned about human beings doing this business with Islam that are unpleasant. And one of them is, is that people will do almost anything to avoid facing the truth. Go back to the denial is the biggest river in the world. So what would you recommend at this point to talk to people like you used to when you were in front of the classroom or when you were in front of the group of um, local Jewish celebrity rabbis in Nashville who didn't want to listen. How do you get people's attention to say, look, this guy, A, is nuts, B, hates people on a big scale, and C, ought to be ostracized, should not be part of humanity, mainstream, shouldn't be on Twitter, shouldn't be on Facebook, his three or four or five hour speeches about how everybody is a horrible human being except the people that follow him. You know what I'm talking about. Yep. How do you get the truth out, Dr. Bill? 
you know, if I could answer that question, you'd have to go to my th secretary to get to talk to me. I've been working on this problem since 9-11. I'm very naive. I thought that people wanted to know the truth. I thought that people wanted to know the facts. When I did, I, I did, I'm part of the few people you've ever met who's actually produced a Quran. And my Quran can be read and understood by anybody. When I finished my work with the Quran, which is one, part of the, one of the three sacred texts of Islam, I thought people would run towards to me to get the material. Well, they ran okay, but it was in the other direction. People are afraid of knowing the truth of this. For one thing, you'll be socially, iso you'll be socially isolated. Do you know at one time the Southern Poverty Law Center says that I was one of the 10 biggest bigots in the United States. So you may want to destroy this vintage footage that we're doing now and not be seen with me, so long as we're talking about pictures being stood side by side. But uh, people don't want to know. I th they're, they are afraid, very much afraid. One of the most successful videos I made was entitled, Why We Are Afraid. And I've tried to develop this theory about why we are afraid. And, but one of them is you'll be socially isolated. I mean, I've had vicious things said about me. I won't give you the long laundry list of how I've been persecuted by Google, Amazon, YouTube, Twitter, and then others. I mean, PayPal of all things threw me off. Why? Because I stand for the truth that is found in the Islamic doctrine. And for that, PayPal says that violates our terms and conditions. So people are afraid that if they speak the truth or if they know the truth, that they will be isolated. They'll be well, I can just tell you that some very unkind things have said, been said to me at face to face. I had a man who was a Jewish leader said to me, you're a racist and a hater. I says, I will never speak to you again. And got him stormed out of the room. I guess the only way to explain it is, like you said, there are a certain percentage of people, and sadly, that seems to be a big number, Dr. Bill, that just can't handle the truth. Tell our viewers how they can find you, would you please? All right. Politicalislam.com is my website. And also I have a channel, YouTube channel on political Islam. And so that'd be the best place to get acquainted with me. I do, I do, I specialize in small five to seven minute videos. I've learned this. People don't want to know a lot, but they would like to know a little. So therefore, for instance, I sell books that are 400 pages long and I sell books that are 80 pages long. The little books outsell the big ones 20 to one. I totally get it. Thanks for joining us today on ATP Report. Uh, thank you to Dr. Bill Warner. For those of you that haven't signed up yet, please take out your cell phone and send the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202. Push send. You'll be automatically subscribed to our text message service. You'll get videos like this one for free on your cell phone, and you don't have to do anything but look down into the palm of your hand. <laughs> For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.